If you're looking for Iceland packing tips, then keep watching. I did a week-long solo trip, and my gear kept me warm during my hikes, glacier walk, and adventures. Iceland is a tricky place to pack for because the weather can turn on you randomly. I was in Iceland in early May and we had several beautiful days and several days with torrential downpour. You need to be ready for a variety of situations and here's how you can pack for Iceland better. Let's start with the best buy of this trip, the absolute workhorse of a product. That is my Jack Wolf mini backpack. So this is actually only 900 grams. Um, so it's quite light and it expands to fit tons of gear and clothes if you really need it to. Um, I bought it because I really needed to attach my clip for my camera. Unfortunately, I can't show you how it works because <laughs> I'm using it to film. But what happens is this stays here and my mirrorless camera can actually attach and deattach right from my shoulder. So my hands are free, I get to focus on what I'm doing, which is trekking, and I can still easily have my camera um, attached to me. What I didn't realize is how much I would depend on this little backpack because I actually brought a big, I think this is like 90 liters or 70 liters, I'm not sure, this is Tropic Feel. I brought a big backpack to carry all of my camera equipment, but when I realized how long I would be trekking, this size made the most sense and I bought it the day I left for Iceland. So another really interesting feature is, and that came in really good use, is this cover, a waterproof cover. Now, first of all, it's attached to the bottom. And then when you cover it, you can hook this piece to the top of the backpack as well. And that ensures the cover stays on and doesn't blow away, which was a big problem for me before I figured out that it had this hook at the bottom. It also detaches. So um, on the sides, I have enough space to hold my tripod. I can hold a water bottle there. And then I have quick access right here in the front for any smaller items that I might need. Set this up. You can also continue to compress the backpack because it has these side um, clips. And when you're wearing the backpack, um, it has back support because you know, your girl's not 21 anymore. And you can clip it to the top and clip it to your waist to make sure that it's really comfortable when you're moving around and trekking. Plus there's a little emergency whistle. Well, you have to unplug it. So I don't wanna do it too loud because I don't want people to think I'm in danger. So absolute best buy of the trip. Could not do all of this without it because you are out there going up and down for a long time. This brings me to my second workhorse of the trip which is my Tropic Feel backpack. Now this is pretty big, like I use this to bring my drone, my drone um, remote, three batteries, my Sony A7 Mark III camera, two lenses, two mics, because you can't never have enough mics. Um, and then it would hold my tripod as well, both the mini one and the large one. Um, and with still space to, to include. Oh, it also held my makeup and my uh, headphones and my um, toiletries. So really a fantastic purchase. My one gripe and Tropic Feel, you really need to go back to R&D and like really question them why on earth this is a feature. So yes, it has a strap for, uh, to attach the backpack to your luggage when you're like rolling around your luggage, but it's at the bottom. And so the backpack tips forward all the time and I think I'm gonna have to get a, like a secondary strap or something to the top because I cannot run through a airport without this falling down and that's just not a, a helpful feature for me. Um, something that sold me on the purchase of the bag is the fact that it has ooh, a turtle shell opening so I can lay it down and, and grab what I need from here. It also has a protected section for your laptop, iPad, anything that's really flat, some really good um, zipper areas as well. So you can also extract things from the top by releasing these here and then you can pull things out from inside from the top. 
There are three extensions that you can buy with this backpack. One is for a camera, one is to pack, and one is some sort of like toiletry bag that hangs right here. Um, I bought all three just out of curiosity. Um, I will say that the toiletry part protrudes out and is not TSA compatible because it's not see-through. So I had to bring like a separate see-through compartment for that. Um, but I can see how backpackers who stay in one location and like travel on buses would be, um, would find this very helpful. Uh, secondly, there is a compression um, extension to it, so you can put your clothes in the compression extension and then flatten it as much as possible. For me, since I'm staying in like nice hotels-ish, um, that was not really a use case I had, so if I ever decided to like go back to backpacking in hostels, you can hang your clothes in that expando case and that would make sense. Something that I did buy though, um, and our curr I'm currently using, is the camera extensions. So this is the camera case that I bought with the backpack, and I mean, it's fine, it does the job, it has a protective layer, and I really like this top part where I can have all of my wires and organize them. My one complaint is, it's pretty small, like, <laughs> I can really only fit one camera, my battery um, packs, and then my drone remote control, so... Tropic feel like waiting for your next extension um, case because I need more camera equipment than this, please. The next item on my list that is a must have are hiking boots that are waterproof and that come above the ankle. Now, I just got these brand new from Zalando in uh, Europe. That's where I tend to shop the most because I can control what type of materials I buy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so these guys are waterproof. Like there's a protective layer right here, quite sturdy. And this has made a huge difference in my trekking because there's so many different elements. There's a raised heel here, which is perfect because there are tons of like puddles everywhere. Um, and most importantly, the terrain is so uneven and I have really weak ankles from the decade of soccer that I played uh, back in the States. So I'm not rolling my ankles every time I hit something weird. And on the bottom, you see that there's a lot of like friction and there's the ability to grip on this uneven ground. So this is really important as well. Um, the material inside is actually quite warm. I've not had an issue with um, being warm here, thank God, because of my gear however i see a lot of people being very uncomfortable with like normal tennis shoes or white sneakers don't bring them here they will get ruined um rocks regularly get stuck underneath um and you're just going to be wet so invest in a good pair of hiking boots these cost me 70 bucks they made my trip because i'm actually quite comfortable so don't cheap out on this Now we're gonna talk about clothing because you have to be very, very intentional with what you pack here. Um, the good part is you really only need to bring two of everything and then you can rotate and wash at your hotel or just be a little stinky um, <laughs> if you have really no shame or no fear. Um, so let's get into it. And I'm actually going to dress for my glacier walk to give you an example and an idea of what it will look like. Um, so first and foremost, you need like warm, long underpants. Um, I got these in Switzerland when I was motorcycling. There, it, It's called Odlo, O-D-L-O. Uh, -O. Uh, this is a size medium. I am a size 10 UK. I don't really know what that is in the US, uh, 40 in Europe. Um, so these fit just fine. And these go on with my wool socks that, that go over the ankle part. So it, it, there's not a lot of room and opportunity for water to get in. Now under these, you should either add a pair of leggings, like a Lululemon kind of situation, because if you're here in the winter, this is not going to cut it. But I'm here in the spring. So on top of these, I also wear these waterproof uh, hiking pants from REI. Um, this, it, the brand is called Cool, K 
KU with umlauts HL. Uh, it's a 10 regular. I'm a pretty tall young lady, so um, I was really impressed that they managed to go all the way down. Now, what's important about these is you need it to stretch a little bit because you're moving all sort of which ways and you wanna make sure that it's not stiff. It also needs to be windproof because the wind will literally sweep you away. And uh, especially atop of the glacier and on top of these cliffs, that's a huge possibility. So don't skip out on good hiking pants. Okay, let's keep going with the gear. So I've actually changed into those pants. So underneath, you can see I have the warming um, long underwear. I have the um, waterproof, windproof pants. That's what it looks like from behind. Hello, mom. Um, and so then the next layer is this base layer. Now this is a Lululemon moisture wicking technology of some sort, and it's cropped because I don't want my gear to come all the way around my waist as it bothers me and my mobility, but that's just a personal preference. Um, so once you have the base layer on, you should pick your next layer should be either wool or fleece. Now I got this uh, when I landed from 66 North, I went to their flagship store, which actually had an outlet connected to it in some like weird dark alley. Um, and that was the best find I could have ever made because this actually cost me like 50% of what it was going to cost. So it even has this like warming hood. You're gonna put the fleece and or wool over the moisture wicking uh, base layer. So we're going to do that right now. I actually just noticed a bug in my room. I don't know how I got there. I haven't opened the window. Okay. So now you look really cute with your little hood on. Okay. Now another reason you want a base layer is because if you're wearing wool, it can get sometimes get a little scratchy. And for me, I'm neurodivergent. So the scratchiness just like ruins my day and I, I can't get over it. So I went with fleece um, and then it, because of this extra base layer, it traps in the heat without like creating a moisture sort of situation. So for me, this has worked the entire time. Um, after you put on your base layer and your fleece and or wool, I have chosen to go with a, another layer. So this is again, 66 North. Um, Shout out to that brand. If you guys need any more models in the European Union, I am ready and available. Um, and so this layer actually has a layer of down here. And then I'm pretty sure this second layer is, actually, I thought it was Gore-Tex, but I, I cannot be sure. Let's have a look. Let's see. It's polyester, but it's like a special kind of polyester because Normally polyester just does not seem to work for me. I sweat through it or I get really uncomfortable, but um, this is a wonderful jacket. The insides actually have several pockets. So um, I really love this feature and I put my keys and my phone in there if I'm just walking around with just this. I love that there's that zipper feature so you can make sure your stuff doesn't get lost. So let's go ahead and put this layer on next. Really starting to, to heat up here because I'm not outside with the glacier yet. There we go. Okay, hold, hold on to your fleece while you pull this in to make sure it doesn't get stuck. So there's two zippers here. Let me just fix my little hood. One right here, standard zipper. But then also they have this bottom zipper in case you get too warm and want to ventilate a little bit. It has pockets here that also zip up so you don't have to lose anything or be worried about anything. And we're still not done, guys. We still got more to go. of this entire trip is once again 66 North um, this I think it's a ski jacket technically um, but it has down in it this is definitely made out of Gore-Tex um, it's waterproof up to a certain degree and I wear it all over Germany because it's light while still being so so warm and so 
This is actually going to go on top of all of those layers. <sighs> Don't forget to hold the, the sleeves, guys, because otherwise you won't ever get anywhere. So, taking this down. I can move relatively comfortably, even though I have all these layers. Um, but most importantly, this is waterproof, and you're going to find that, that is a huge requirement here. They have buttons here, so I can secure that. Um, don't forget gloves. You are not too good to have gloves. I will suggest that you have the gloves that allows you to, like, touch your phone, though. Otherwise, you're just going to be really annoyed like I am. Um, the pockets also zip shut so you don't lose anything. You have pockets up at the chest, too. This is where I tend to keep my phone for easy access. And there's a second zipper so you can undo that in case you want to ventilate a little bit more or you want to have more range of motion. So when it's raining, I put my hair in a ponytail and I put first my fleece hood up, looking real cute, and then I put the secondary hood up and tighten with these um, pulleys here. You can actually change the, the top of the hood as well to fit your preferences more. But what threw me off at first is it's quite tight here around the waist. Like I can feel a line here um, so I can even tighten it more. And that's actually because it's for skiing and you don't want to allow um, snow to come in there. So that's the reason why it's tighter here. Um, I do look a little bit larger than what I would normally look like, but this is keeping, or we're trying to keep warm people. This is not a fashion show. So um, as long as, I'm feeling good. Woo. I'll bleep that out. Um, so there we go. Last but not least, we have wool socks and you want this to come over your um, ankle quite a bit because your shoes are going to be over your ankle so you want to make sure there's no friction there. Um, but these I got from REI as well. Um, they're wonderful. I don't know what their names are but they're tactical so you want tactical gear. And it's nice to bring pretty things here too, but you're gonna see real quickly, <laughs> it is, Mother Nature is not to be best with here, y'all. So come prepared, even if you look like a little potato. Um, you're gonna look like a cute potato. And most importantly, you're going to be warm. So the total outfit for today's glacier hike looks a little bit like this. And then of course my shoes. And so I'll be attaching this here and then around my waist for security and then make that a little looser and then once again the pride and joy is my camera clip so I actually have a pretty large wide lens uh, that I take around here um, and I'm able to press this button right here right there and then it, the, the camera just falls and releases into my hand. Now, when it's actually clipped on, I'm moving around a bunch, nothing falls. It's amazing. People have been stopping me all over Iceland to be like, what is that? Tell me where you got it, blah, blah. So you will also make friends. Um, this is the final outfit, guys. I'm gonna go uh, trekking on a glacier now. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell to be notified whenever I have a new video because I really specialize in solo female travel, adventure, moving abroad, and I work really hard on this content, so I want people to see it. Anyway, go say hello to me on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. You can find me at Wander Onwards on all major platforms, and thanks so much for watching. watching. If you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel.